Father, we come before you this morning. We've sung songs like Take My Life, Form It, Use It, Break Me. Lord, this morning, we repent of trying to take control of the bigger picture. And we want to come before you this morning and we want to just kneel at your feet, broken, and we want to submit to your authority and your plan. And Lord, if you've got us in a holding pattern right now because you're prepping us for something great, we want to be faithful and we want to trust you. Lord, we repent of fighting the fight ourselves. We repent of trying to plant a church on our own strength. We repent of trying to instill the word of God in somebody else's life out of our own power and our own initiative. And Lord, there's so many things that can be done supernaturally by you. Lord, the battle is not ours. It's yours. The specific areas of our life this morning where we haven't relinquished and surrendered control, God, I pray that you would give us a humble heart this morning and that we would release those areas to you in complete surrender. And Lord, if it takes 120 years, we're willing to wait because your way is the way that leads us to the promised land. We want to be holy, Lord, because you are holy and we want to trust you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Amen. I want you to turn with me now, and I want you to turn over to um, Exodus. And we're going to look at chapter 15, starting in verse 22. On the screen this morning, it's not going to pick up until verse 26. If you got your Bibles this morning, most of the beginning of chapter 15 is a praise song. Nancy's read part of it during worship this morning. It's a praise song that says that we will sing of the Lord. He's our strength and our song. He's our salvation. The right hand of the Lord is majestic and powerful. Who is there among you, O Lord? Because you are holy and righteous. Your love is unfailing. And they sing an entire song of praise to God. Why? Because he delivered them from oppression over the Egyptians. The Red Sea was parted. They walked through it. You realize that the the cloud of God and the pillar of fire was moving with the Israelites, right? Like there was a visual representation of God that was with them as they journeyed out of Egypt. God was very evident and very present. And so not many of us have seen the sea parted. And we've walked through on dry land and experienced the pillar and the fire of God, right? Quite like that. Right after that happens, in verse 22, the header in my Bible says, the dissatisfaction of the people. Crazy. The complaint about bitter water. And here's what it says in my Bible, starting in verse 22. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That's why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord. What happens when we cry out to the Lord? He hears our cry, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. And he said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I want you to say with me this morning, the Lord is my healer. Often, we take in our own control our life, our health, and our happiness. We think it's completely dependent on us. And sometimes God will lead you in your spiritual journey to a mountaintop high, 
and then we'll turn around off of the mountaintop, and guess what we become? Bitter. And this morning, we need to be reminded that God is faithful, and He's just. And this morning, I want you to know, because there's some people here that need to hear this, the Lord your God is your healer. The stuff that's weighing you down, whether it's physical or emotional, God is your healer. You don't have to look for it in any other source. You just need to trust in Him. Right after God provides for them sweet water, not just regular H2O, He flavored it. My Bible says in the heading of chapter 16, the complaint about hunger. So in chapter 16, the whole Israelite community, they set out once again in the desert. In the desert, the community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. Now they don't really mean that. They're just being babies. And they're grumbling and they're complaining and they're being bitter again. And so guess what? God has a solution for them. And you know what he does? You know what he sends for them every night? Anyone know? Every night. Flock of quail come flying into the desert. Do quail live in the desert? No. Quail fly in every night and provides them meat. And then every morning when they wake up, guess what's there? Manna. Sweet wafers of honey. And provides for their every need. And then he gives them instruction and he says to them, hey, we're going to make this really simple. Here's what I want you to do. Eat all you want at night. Wake up in the morning and go eat manna. Do that for six days. Collect extra on the sixth day because on the seventh day, I don't want you to work. I want you to rest. Why does he want him to rest? Because he knows what's best for us. He made us. And you know what, this morning, we have to be really honest about something. Do we take a Sabbath day to rest and trust God because he knows what's best for us? And in the midst of this, you know what we do? We'll say, well, I've got to go to church this morning, and then I've got a to-do list. I've got to paint this, and I've got to do this, and I've got to go through this, and go through this. And it ends up being another day of labor. And then when we get to the end of the day, we say, well... I just have so much to do, it's not my fault. And we have all kinds of excuses why we don't need the rest that God designed for us to have. And one of the things that we need to think about this morning is, maybe we need to stop and we need to repent, because in verse 27 of chapter 16, it says, Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. And the Lord said to to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath that is on the sixth day. He gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where he is on the seventh day. No one is to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. 